recently I found the most 2020 slash 2021 action figure you could ever find. This is a courier action figure. This is a time capsule for the era. The kids are going to play with this thing. I want to put something out to you guys. All right. I think that G.I. Joe Classified will would be a much bigger line if it was stocked properly. Everywhere I go, there is a hundred over 100% demand for every figure that they put out. Even peg warmers yeah even you know figures that that are not popular they sell peg warmers is the code name for toys and collectibles with high supply and low demand join kevin and his team of collector commandos as they discuss popular and not so popular retro and current toy brands welcome to peg warmers i'm kevin i'm ryan i'm kieran and we're here to talk about toys Ryan's here from Talk About Games, and Kieran's here from Cinemassacre. Do you have anything going on in your worlds that you guys want to kind of throw out there first? Well, we just started doing Talk About Games, and it's been a lot of fun. Mike and I, we each bring our own game, maybe something he's streaming, something that I'm playing. Okay. We talk about them, and then we have a topic that we talk about, and it's a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, we started doing the Cinemassacre podcast just recently, and it's been a good time. Me, Justin, and... and James are, are uh, just kind of sitting around talking about whatever's been going on, especially because this is the first time most of us had ever filmed, you know, in the same room for a good year or yeah. so and a half. So it was good. Well, it's great to have you guys back on again. I mean, you guys have both been in videos with me before on the old format of the channel and stuff. Yep. So it, it's, uh, it's great to have you guys here. So the in the news, which is our first segment, usually Hasbro is talking about raising prices ahead of the holiday crunch. So we know that, you know, everything in the market has been up and down. Certain things have become way more popular. Things have become less popular. And so we've got the holiday season coming up and ahead of time Hasbro's, you know, trying to figure this whole thing out. And so they had a, you know, they, their profit meetings and stuff like that. And so the CEO is is kind of letting people know because freight's going up, the cost of plastic, all that stuff mm. is a mess. I, I gotta be honest, I'm a I'm a little frustrated with Hasbro right now because I'm a big fan of Magic the Gathering. And right now, if you go to your local game store, a box of the new uh, Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms set mm. is like 139, 140 for a box of cards. With the Strixhaven set right now, they have the set boxes, which only, they don't have the full 36 packs. They have oh, less okay. packs, but they charge more money for it because it has more premium cards. You cannot get a 36-pack draft box of Strixhaven. Everything is up in price. Everything is Amazon Direct now instead of the local game stores don't have the inventory. It's just really difficult. I know paper is another one of the commodities that has skyrocketed recently. Yeah, so lumber and everything like all anything, that stuff is yeah, out of control. All that stuff, yeah, probably because of the you know the way the world is burning and yeah. everything like that. It's always uh, yeah. also well, plastic is oil too. I believe it's yeah. like comes from oil, so that's you know it's like the '70s again, right? <laughs> but I'm still I'm still buying it. <laughs> it's it's tough. I mean, I don't buy too many Hasbro figures to begin with. I only really do Cobra Commanders or someone that I like really need, but they're already 20 bucks. So it's like, are they going to raise them to 25? I mean, that's already, you buy four figures, that's a hundred bucks. That's right. a little bit insane. Well, I mean, think of all of the stuff they sell over the Christmas holiday from their board games to, you know. Oh, Transformers. The, the preschool toys, all that stuff. Yeah, you know, Marvel all that's going them up. too. Yeah, Marvel Legends, Everything Marvel. Star yeah. Wars. Yep. Okay, so then our next segment is new to the collection. Anybody have anything new recently they picked up? So I was I was kind of surprised by it because I didn't see the announcement, but I just got the uh, Lego Adidas Rockstar shoe. I feel bad because I wear them almost every day. I'm not wearing them today, but <laughs> um, I just it's it's wild. It it's it's a Lego that comes in a shoe box. Okay, but then you can flip the shoe box top up. And it has the traditional Lego packaging inside it, and it's just the Rockstar shoe. And hmm. I really like it. I have, um, I, I collect Batmobiles, like Hot Wheels Batmobiles, and yeah. I just got the, uh, I bought like four of them, but the uh, Robert Pattinson oh, yeah, Batmobile, yeah. It, they, they released them, but I bought them ahead of time on eBay because I was afraid the movie was going to get canceled or whatever was going on, and they weren't going to put the car out. So mm. I bought a couple for five bucks on eBay. And then I found a bunch at the store for 98 cents and I picked them all up too. And then I opened one too. So I was like, 
run around my desk every once in a while. Nice. I, I'm excited for that movie, actually. I Me too. Hope, I hope it's good. Like, yeah. Um, it, it's one of those characters that, like, you shouldn't screw, be able to screw up. Like, Batman's pretty basic, yeah. uh, you know, the, the formula to it. Um, but with Ben Affleck not being as eager to do it, I, I'm I glad think he, that there's somebody that they're getting somebody else. It seems like he's going to be in the Flash movie, and yeah. that's going to open up the multiverse. So that may make it very easy for them to keep both. Because this one's supposed to be taking place in a different Earth than right. the other ones. But honestly, I I, I love uh, Zack Snyder's uh, cut of the Justice League. I, I loved every minute of it, okay. and I I love Ben Affleck as Batman. I think he was one of the best ones so far. Visually, he is probably the best, most imposing Batman that I think has ever been on film. I would agree with that. I, I think it's crazy that we live in a world where we can have like multiverse spanning superhero movies that cost hundreds of yeah. millions of dollars. It's crazy that multiverse is a like thing that kids and like old people understand now. Yeah. That was, yeah. you know, as a kid, you were like, if you were into comics or sci-fi, you understood that concept, and everyone else was like, "What are you talking about? It's Superman from a different Earth." What? Mm -hmm. When they and, were coming out with Avengers, I didn't believe it was going to happen, and okay. they were like, "Oh, we're making they're making five movies. They're making Thor, Hulk, Iron Man, and and Captain America, and then they're going to make the Avengers." I was like, "Yeah, sure. When's that coming out? Like 2050, like that." And then it's like it's come and gone in ten years. It's, it's crazy. Such a weird concept. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot of the stuff. I think back to like the old Simpsons episode where Homer Simpson's like, "Nerd." <laughs> 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 all right and then our next segment is either peg warmer or low budget bonanza and sometimes we do a peg warmer because that's the name of the show and sometimes we do something low budget but it's got to be something entertaining uh and recently i found the most 2020 slash 2021 action figure you could ever find this is a courier action figure he's got his little covid mask on and he's from a line of heroes that includes an emt a nurse and a doctor there's also some military and police figures in this line they're not shown on the, the, the back art mm -hmm. but this is hilarious like this is a time capsule for the era the kids are going to play with this thing i think i think it's amazing because like if you go back to like the world war ii you have like a rosie the riveter you have something that's like on a on a poster that everyone remembers that time or a hippie or something yeah. like that now you have this and it's like you're gonna see that in a thrift shop 10 years from now and be like yeah that's 2020 you're gonna see that in a thrift shop 10 minutes from now <laughs> 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 Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that that's like you know, you take that to school and everybody's just gonna rip on it. Like you know, everybody has their toy. Because also too, who even plays with action figures other than us and, right. and adults now? It's it, kids are playing video we, games and stuff. We're we we're, we're, we're having the conversation, and this kind of segues into the toy line we're going to talk about today. But um, the toy aisle at Target or at Walmart is really about parents getting gifts for the birthday party or the the gathering or whatever something like that it's it's kind of like this transactional thing but to us it's really important and yeah. everything and this is like you know a, a parent would buy this and bring it to the birthday party and the kid's like the kid gets <laughs> beat know, up like, afterwards yeah you know, it's, the kid gets beat up in the tube maze or whatever in the arcade he's like, <laughs> Maybe they just realized, like, if Amazon's the biggest or second biggest employer in the world, that people, all these Amazon employees will buy the action figure for their kid. Look, it's you dead. Know, and, and, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and that actually, you saying that kind of hit me. And I was like, you know, that is pretty nice. Like, a kid could be like, my dad, it, it, it's an action figure. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's actually kind of cute. Connected yeah. to G.I. Joe and that, that sentiment. A friend of mine got the G.I. Joe Tomahawk when we were kids, and he got it before I had it, and he brought it to my house. And I was like, well, what's the pilot's name? He's like, I, I don't know. I, like, I, you didn't ask your mom to read the file card to you? He's like, <laughs> you ask your mom? I'm like, yes, you need to know about the character. So we didn't know what he was named, so we called him Donald because my dad was a helicopter mechanic and my dad's Donald Jones. So for like that whole day playing, it was like, come on, Donald, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that toy? Uh, Five Below. Oh, okay. Five okay. Below, yeah, there's like a new line. That Five they, Below sometimes carrying. has some real hits. You, you can find some really, like a lot of toys that just kind of either came and went at another store, you'll find for five bucks. It, yeah, they, they also a lot of like peg warmers are there. Like yeah. you can get all the, the uh, Disney Star Wars figures there. Yeah. When we when we first started doing SEO Toy Review, I remember that was like the last time I was in a Five Below looking for toys. And they had that, that G.I. Joe, like the, I guess like, 
25th ones that were just overstock or something yeah, like the that. Yeah, the movie, the they, ones that came out when the movie finally yeah. came out. Yeah. And they had and, like the ultimate wit line that had Quinn. Yeah. It, and uh, a really good Cobra Commander, a really good Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Yep. Yeah. I got yeah. all of those too for five bucks. And then I, I tried to bring my doubles to RetroCon, but there were so many other people that, that I think the had same the same thing. idea. So they were selling them for yeah. retail. I ended up just holding on them for a bit. That same time period. I, I thought the Dollar General basics were pretty cool. I wish they yeah. did more like dedicated. I liked that line. They yeah. reminded me of Fun School, the Fun School Joes back uh, in the 90s and stuff. Yeah. They were kind of like that. Because um, Dollar General had had their own figures during the like new sculpt era the joe vs cobra and the spy troops era they did figures then and then they got those new ones during like the 25th era um and they repainted all of them but they were kind of cool i yeah. like them all right so our main topic today is gi joe classified this is a line that we all collect to different levels yeah um I've got the majority of the line with a few things I've missed, some of which I kind of skipped on purpose and some that I didn't want to skip. Ryan's got the majority of the line, and it's working on getting the whole thing. Yeah. And Kieran's a, a very selective collector. Yeah, I only have like three of them. I just want to say, I walked in here, because because when, when this line first came out, Kevin was like... It's cool, but you know I'm I'm holding off. I'm I'm waiting and seeing. And I thought I was coming in here today. I'm like, I got them all, man. And he's like, I got them too. I'm Kevin Jones. What do you, what what do you expect? What I've, is this? I've missed very few, and <laughs> you know some of the ones that I've missed, or one of the ones I've missed is one that almost everybody missed because it's one of the Target exclusives that are just impossible to find. Uh, but the series started with the Deluxe Snake Eyes. Yeah. And then they almost immediately rolled out Wave 1. And so I passed on the Deluxe Snake Eyes at first and got all of Wave 1. You know, I, I, I felt like the Deluxe Snake Eyes, you're paying mostly for the packaging. Yeah. And yeah. I don't really like keeping my stuff in the package. Cool weapons and stuff. He does. Like a and lot of weapons. All of them come with the Red Ninja figure, basically. Oh, really? Except for wow. like the rack they go on. Yeah. Oh, they, they, no they, way. You know, so yeah. like. Hasbro was putting out a really cool figure, but they're not. They weren't spending a lot of money on the tooling in that sense because it's yeah. a repaint figure with what we weapons from another character. Mostly, was it a, was it a Comic Con exclusive too, or something like that? Uh, you can only get it, it Pulse? at Pulse. Pulse. Yeah, exclusive? Hasbro, Hasbro Pulse, Pulse. Yeah. exclusive. And you know what's funny? I, I was watching the the GI Joe movie, and the the thing that the flame gem yeah. thing is in is the same design as the the weapon rack. It mm. is the same dragon pattern yeah. on it that it comes out of. Well, so if we didn't have COVID, Classified Wave 1 would have been on the shelves with the movie figures at the time the movie came out. Mm. Like, that's the way Hasbro meant to market G.I. Joe, was that there would have been Classified for the Collectors, movie toys that were like Classified, like halfway in between. and yeah. then movie toys that were geared at kids. And so far... Like, the the classifieds have come out a bunch of waves. We've got the movie classified figures hitting now. Some people have found them. And the kitty stuff, I don't even think is out yet. But there's, like, Night Creeper and, and Snake Eyes with his motorcycle and a whole bunch of stuff that's, oh, no like, way. based, you know, sort of on the movie. Or, I didn't know they made a Night Creeper figure. Is he yeah, in the movie? No. It, it looks like the, like, 88 yeah, figure. Yeah, okay. But it's just Like the part purple of the with the camo yeah, kind yep. in the mat. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's going to be the one. hardest one to find because he's an army builder. And because he looks like a vintage figure, people are going to buy him up. And the I think the rest of the movie Snake Eyes kid figures are going to probably hmm. peg warm. I, I think it's it's crazy that um, the G.I. Joe Retaliation video game came out. And we did it on retail reviews, which we haven't done that show in over a year. And a lot of the character designs, like Cobra Commander has the gun that he has in the line. Um you know, Duke looks like the Duke from yeah. this line. And it's a fun game. It's it's great. It's it's easy if you play it. It's but we had that. That was over a year ago. Right. We had this line. Everything's all not going according to plan. No, because all of that should have been one big media blitz together. And it yeah. it's kinda crazy because, you know, the Snake Eyes movie probably would have done better if everything happened at once. It's what always happens with their movies. You hype everything up. But yeah, retaliation was the same thing. They they pulled it to convert it to 3D. And because they needed to reshoot a bunch of stuff with Channing Tatum right. because all of a sudden he was a... They a killed star. him off in the fi first five minutes and he became an international sensation and they were like, oh, crap. And, <laughs> and so like they trickled out some of the stuff, then trickled out more later when the movie came out. And they just kind of blow that whole excitement yeah. around the movie. This isn't just a Hasbro problem, though. If you look, I remember when we were talking about it on SEO Tour Review, I, I would always talk to you about how Voltron 
the it yeah. was so divided from when the toys came out from when the series came out. If you look at well, this is Hasbro again, but you look at the new War for War for Cybertron. Mm-hmm. The War for Cybertron toys are spread out horribly. Yeah. Turtles, they came out kind of staggered and weird. The Shira thing was the same thing. Those toys were on clearance. Now people are paying 50 bucks a pop for them because the kids are finally finding it on Netflix and watching it and getting into it. I, uh, one of my coworkers' daughters, she told me that her daughter was like into the, the show. I was like, well, I have like six of those dolls. I bought them for five bucks a piece on clearance. Here, have one for her. But they're going like hotcakes now because finally it found its audience. Yeah. And so... The rollout to make the show is faster than the rollout to make the toys, and so nothing comes out together. We like we never got a full set of the Voltron um, no. pilots, right? They never made Princess Alora, even though they had it prototyped, because the show would just ended, and they're like, okay, we're done with the toys. Yeah, and I was always disappointed in that line that we didn't get the red guy. What's his name? It was Lance. We never got Lance is blue, right? Keith. Oh, Keith. Yeah, yeah. Keith Keith we never one, got yeah. Keith in his like shadow yeah the second set of the suits. second set of suits i'm like that would have been so cool he yeah. would have had awesome accessories and stuff i used to have all those 90s uh voltron when they re-released them and oh, stuff yeah. I, had every, I had the stealth voltron which right? was really dumb like <laughs> <laughs> i was actually just looking at a panache place voltron from the 80s the one that, with the compartments open up and you yeah. put the guys in them yeah i have two of it and both of them have different broken pieces and i'm trying to figure out how to combine them mm-hmm. but they're two different versions of it one is like the earliest release that release has like chrome buttons okay, in different places yeah, on it. Yeah. The other one has like yellow plastic ones. I was like, I don't even know if I can combine this without it looking yeah. stupid. But I just picked them up at different. Like I was like, oh, I have one of those. Here's another one that has a good arm. And uh, then when I went to like look at them the other day, I was like, oh shoot, they don't, yeah. they don't really match up quite right. I had a lot of those '90s. The '90s one that was like this big that you could just put together was really cool. And I had the one that was like an action figure size that just yeah. the chest would open up and you just put the one black lion guy in there and yeah, that's yeah. it. But those were really cool figures. Voltron's always good. I don't know. Yeah. I want to put something out to you guys. All right. I think that G.I. Joe Classified will would be a much bigger line if it was stocked properly. Mm-hmm. I think, and, and I, I know we've had this conversation offline, but I think that I go in the Target. I go in the Walmart. Everywhere I, I go online, everywhere I go, there is... A hundred over a hundred percent demand for every figure that they put out, even peg warmers, yeah, even you know figures that that are not popular, they sell. It a hundred percent sells out around here everywhere. I don't even want to talk about what I paid for some of these figures, like the Viper <laughs> and the Regal Cobra yeah. Commander. I'm, I'm jealous of both of those two. I I paid a pretty penny for my deluxe Snake Eyes when I went back to get yeah. deluxe snake eyes yeah like imagine if just they had eight pegs yeah just just maybe three or four times what they're they'd sell i'm wondering if this is the reflection on the old movie line so when the first movie came out rise of cobra they made a huge selection of characters like everybody in the movie and everybody that wasn't in the movie was a figure yep and then they sat on pegs. Mm-hmm. They, it sold well I at first. I bought them all up. Like I, I bought was, it all too. They, they started rushing out. They were out, just yeah. way too many figures to keep up with the the kid demand, right? You know, like the the collectors got what they wanted, and there was mm-hmm. still stuff on the peg. And so I'm wondering if it's just Walmart and Target. And these people are are just more cautious in their order number. And Hasbro was like, we would be super happy to send you an extra you know cases but they're like yeah we're good could be and they're just making sure it sells out i mean that's a good thing to to build brand confidence again that oh gi joe does sell out and maybe we'll see that turn around like the the target stuff just sold out in nanoseconds and now major blood wasn't really a peg warmer but for a split second he was like he actually got stocked an adequate amount that I people saw were able to grab. I saw a of those a couple weeks ago. Just like two yeah. full pegs. There had to be like gone. eight on each one. And I passed on it because I was, I, I don't, you know, I only collect certain characters, but right. if I had known that Major Blood was going to be such a, ma- like a major figure, I would have picked up a few of them. But I went uh, one day at Target. They were all there. I went maybe three or four days later and it was none of them. They were all gone. Every single one. 
I'm surprised that they continue to stock Transformers at the level that they do. Yeah. It sells. Yeah. But it doesn't sell as fast as this does. I see a million Transformers. They're always scattered all over the aisles of Target, too, every time I go. So a big thing with the, the box stores is that they expect to sell one item per peg per week. So if there's six figures in the case pack, that's six weeks worth of product. If there's eight figures in the pack, there's it's eight weeks of product and they don't actually care if it sells out in one week or if it sells out in eight weeks as long as it sells out in eight weeks right so they may look at gi joe and transformers as both being equal even though gi joe is selling out in one week and transformers is taking the eight weeks to sell Mm -hmm. out but as collectors it's frustrating because we walk in and go there's transformers there but there's no gi joe yeah yeah because they're not looking at it as like oh yeah somebody bought the whole case pack I think everybody sees like Transformers is very universal. Kids love it still. Adult, adult collectors love it. It's robots that turn into stuff. Yeah. It's cool. G.I. Joe is seen more as like a niche thing, but the thing is it's such a rabid fan base compared to the oh, yeah. universal thing of Transformers. And also the price point on Transformers is kind of ridiculous. Some of those, yeah. some Transformers are, I, I mean, like 20 and up, like they're, they're not cheap at all. Right. I kind of burned out. I mean, I, I don't know if this is something you experienced, but I kind of burned out on Transformers because I started collecting in earnest like during the I mean I have G1 and stuff but I started collecting in earnest during the trans metals period and then I went into the uh, beast the beast machines and the car robots and all of that and by the time I got to like Cy- was it Cybertron or Energon or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I wasn't that. collecting every single one, and then I went down to just select ones, and now I'm like, how many bumblebees do I need? What is a? I think that's one of the smart reasons why they switch scales. Mm-hmm. I think eventually, like I, I haven't looked at YoJo.com recently, and it never never gets updated. But like, what are we at? Snake Eyes version fifty seven. Yep. Like switching over and having a, a, you know, deluxe version one and having version two, like. That's actually a good thing. That's that's why the comic book companies re redo everything and start the numbers over. They claim all the time that nobody wants to collect a comic book that's been running for you know five hundred issues because they can't get all five hundred issues. Mm-hmm. That was like that was actually a thing that they um, they would say years ago. My friend's dad created Moon Knight, and he was writing Moon Knight, and he was also writing Batman. And he would say to them, "I don't understand how Moon Knight outsells Batman," and they're like, "Because Moon Knight has twenty five issues." And like the the old classics, they sell well, but it eventually gets bogged down in the fact that there's so much you can't collect it. And I think that the switch of styles on GI Joe over the years has kept it kind of fresh. Even if when we look back on it, we're like, oh, the new sculpt kind of sucked. Yeah, it did make it fresh for a little while. And so this makes it fresh. And even like Super Seven's Ultimates makes it fresh. We've never actually had animation accurate figures before. Yep. And that's that's what gets me excited about them. They look like. 3D models right of, out of the cartoon. Yeah, exactly. I I can't wait. I can't wait. I have trouble buying hundred dollar toys. I know that I that's that. funny. I get that. But it's it's like you know there were there were things I wanted. I wanted the the new Scorpionoc. Yeah. I wanted you know there there's a lot of stuff that I want. But when I look at a toy and it's a three digit number, I mean they, they look awesome. The new yeah, Joes yeah. look awesome. But I can buy this and not think about it. Yeah. And just be like, okay, cool. I got another I got you got another one. It's great. It's awesome. With that, I'm like, oh, I'm buying like like what could I get? You know, that's like yeah. groceries for my house for I, I definitely a couple could see days. That. Yeah. <laughs> for me, what I see though is like, all right, this fifty five dollar toy is actually a toy I've always wanted. Mm-hmm. Granted, not in that scale. I wanted cartoon accurate in three and three quarter as a kid. But like I buy these guys and like the Cobra Island Roadblock that everyone calls heavy duty. Like, I don't really want that figure. He's a cool looking figure, but I've never in my head gone, oh, you know what I want? I want Roadblock in a tank top with a weird beard. Yeah. Like, that's not. I only so, collect one fi- I collect Cobra Commander mainly. So for me, a $55 Cobra Commander, I know I'm only going to get Cobra. I might get yeah. Snake Eyes. I really like the look of the uh, 
the the Super Seven like uh, mass mass effect or mass mm. device uh, one, but. I'm mostly going to just go Cobra Commander. And I mean, I, I have the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. The and one that was 40 bucks. So The one thing I think they should have done with that Snake Eyes, even though it's not cartoon accurate, I think since they gave him multiple sets of hands, they should have gave him one set of hands that looked gloved. Mm-hmm. Just so it's sort of toy edic, or toy accurate to the, yeah. the original figure. Because the the in the cartoon, he has bare hands. I think that was like, it's like one minor thing that might have swayed a few more people to go after that figure. The only thing oh, wow. that gets me about that is the, the Cobra Commander. They're not doing the hooded Cobra right. Commander anymore because of current political well, Hasbro stuff. Hasbro hasn't said why. Well, that's they, what all yeah, the fans are Super speculating. Super 7 said no hood is allowed. They That's all they, they said. They were told they couldn't yeah. do it right now. And right. They, they're just releasing the two different styles helmets. One has a white stripe and one doesn't, doesn't. and that's right. it, which fine, but... So, I, I mean, there's, two, the there's two big theories there. One is that... Hasbro still hasn't done a hooded for this line, and they're they're saving it as a Trump thing. They, look, they've already sold Ryan three helmeted Cobra yeah, Commanders, I mean, I'd, I'd <laughs> right? One. Like, and then they'll do a hooded one, and he'll be like, "Well, I gotta have it, right?" Yeah. So there's that theory that they just don't want Super Seven getting to the jump on that, and then there's the other one that it does kind of look like a KKK thing, even though there's a very specific shape to a KKK yeah, mask, and that it's also blue. Cobra and, doesn't have, yeah. But I get it, and 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 it may be that they're just looking at it like as a company, as an international company. Okay, you got to be. Do careful. we want to put this figure you know, out or yeah. not? Yeah, and they might be. There's going to be someone on Twitter, gonna, yes, who is going to flip look at a how shit. the fans have blown up about it just by the just by someone from another toy company saying Hasbro told us we couldn't do it right now. Mm-hmm. The fans have like blown up about it. Yeah. So, as as I I know, I know you know you guys like your hooded Cobra Commanders and stuff like that, but as the '90s kid, I want the armored silver yeah with the mic and I'm all for it the pistol and that's well, I, 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 I love the faceplate that's my favorite yeah. but it would have been neat to be able to mix and match what about know, like the '80s whatever. the red faceplate I love that one too the yeah. helmet yeah. and yeah. the red faceplate I used to my cousin had that one and I used to always want to pull the the front just to see what the face looked like underneath and he wouldn't let me play with it after that <laughs> <laughs> well I you know I'm looking at the next wave that's coming out which is the heavy artillery roadblock yes which is awesome fantastic it's got the Gatling gun should have been the first one but I think they knew. Uh, toy companies are very good at that like let's put out a first release and it should be the b version of this because the one they really want they'll come back and buy a second if we put out the a version Mm -hmm. they won't grab the b version when we put it out so they put out the new style roadblock who's similar it looks like the quite what you want movie like how he looked in the movie it's similar it's similar version two but it's not quite there and those so this one Everyone, it's like, all right, I got my Roblox, I'm good. I was like, oh, wait, this one's perfect. You know? So they got the awesome Roblox, and then they got Breaker with the Ram Cycle. My all-time, like, oh, one of my all-time favorite vehicles. I didn't see that yeah, one, actually. Which That's is, cool. Which is awesome. Does he have the bubblegum? He doesn't. That oh. would have been great, though. <laughs> did, did you know that the Gatling gun on the Ram, you can actually take a panel off the sidecar, and the Gatling gun comes out. It's a full... Gatling gun you can give to a guy like it has the handle cool. for Joe to hold it inside the sidecar. Very cool. I really liked it with Baroness's vehicle that the the guns that are on the side of the vehicle actually come off and she can hold them. Yeah, which was which was really cool. Um, getting vehicles in this line, even though they're just motorcycles, I like. We were joking before we started filming about trouble bubbles. Yeah, dude, that'd be amazing. It's, it's on the rumored list that we're gonna get a mind bender with a trouble bubble, but. Very cool. The, the rumor list is really odd for this line. Like, you would assume everybody that's in the video game and everybody that's on the card back we would have, but like, Sci Fi was in the video game. There's still no Sci Fi figure. As far as like Alley Viper, who's on the back of the package, there's prototype pictures that supposedly came out of a Hasbro factory huh. of just the head and the shield. That'd I love amazing. the Alley Viper. Like, oh, wh- why isn't that in a wave yet, though? Like, it's just it's odd that that we're getting all these waves the and like Alley stuff Viper. on the first wave box isn't out yet. The only thing I wouldn't like about it getting Alley Viper is I know I'd have to pay eighty bucks for it on yeah, eBay. Probably <laughs> right. the one they came out with for um, the Pursu- uh, Pursuit of Cobra. I think yeah. that was an yeah. awesome figure too. They they did a really good job. So, I, I what what figure would have to come out for this uh, series to jump the shark? I'm thinking maybe like Serpentor with the the chariot, the oh, chariot, I love Serpentor. That would be like <laughs> a bridge too far. 
I'm hmm. thinking like uh, you know they do somebody kind of wacky that we haven't had in figure form too many times like Big Lob who's only ever been like a, a Big Lob a, and, and a, Tunnel Rat yeah, that would Big be Lob, a good, a good two pack. pack right there yeah you know um, or just one of the really wacky you know end of the era kind of guys like cesspool cesspool yeah <laughs> wow. something like, like hang that hang glider <laughs> Um, so uh, we have Roadblock and Breaker with the Ram Cycle. They're like early yeah. Joes. But then, you know, I, I've pre-ordered a Barbecue. Right. But that's like a... 85. It, oh, that's like later. Yeah. Really? It's only 85? Yep. yep. Is, is there like a repaint that's later? The, like, the one with the holograms on his back? So there, Roadblock... Or, uh, sorry, Barbecue was in 85, and then he was repainted in like 89 for Slaughter's Marauders. And then he was also a eco warrior. He was like, like a blue. red jumpsuit. Okay. I think yeah, for the blue Slaughter's Slaughter's Marauders. Marauders yeah. Yep. yeah. So I guess that's still early. Yeah, I mean 85, 85 and eighty six are kind of the high water mark. I mean, most fans consider eighty five to be the best year. I'm a little biased to eighty six, but I, yeah, I liked the second season of the cartoon more, and that's actually the high water mark as far as sales. Mm. Eighty five was the highest. Started dipping in eighty seven. Um, I love the 90s figures. I, yeah. I know they're like goofy and they're super neon colored all the time, but oh my God, they're I, a I product love the of Ninja the era. Force. Yeah, I love Eco Fun. I, I, and to be honest, I know Star Brigade. I actually would love to see a massive like Duke Star Brigade figure with a gun arm and a helmet and stuff. That would be so cool. <laughs> I, I think that's really where the, we're going to say the line jumps the shark. Probably Star Brigade the same guys way it did in the yeah. past, yeah. you know? It's like, okay. Yeah, or, or the ones right before that, the vacuum metal ones that were like air force looking guys and they had the oh the, the sky patrol guys sky yeah. patrol yeah. yeah they're cool i yeah, like I, them i like sky patrol a lot actually yeah. mega marines the mega marines the and, the and stuff <laughs> you know <laughs> could you imagine they collect the, <laughs> yeah back in they need a full camera with these though. guys that'd be hilarious yeah yeah but but i mean that's that's why i love this line so much is that there's variety you have everything from like we said these, these very early like military looking guys and then we have profit director destro and we have you know uh, the Arctic Mission Storm Shadow from you know Ninja Force and stuff. It's like they're hitting all the notes yeah. with this line. I love that Flint figure too. That, that's another one. He's one of the few GI Joes I actually really enjoy collecting for. Is uh, I, I love Flint. Yeah, Flint Falcon uh, and I and, and Snake Eyes are probably my three favorite like uh, Joe figures. I think they're being very careful with their figure selection on this i mean the, these are pretty much all top tier characters i'd say the red ninja might be their weakest pick as far as being like a a must have because the red ninja really wasn't a figure in the mm -hmm. line until yeah. the tail end and he was a repaint vehicle driver yeah um i mean he red ninja has a long history in the gi joe mythos but as far as like a figure um but like the, the first wave you have roadblock scarlet duke cobra commander Cobra Trooper. Like, these are core yeah. Cobra characters and G.I. Joe characters. And now they're doing, like, the other cartoon prominent characters. You have Beachhead, you have Flint, you have Lady J. Like, they're they're definitely doing the core characters and being smart about it. They don't want to create anything that's, like, accidentally mm -hmm. not selling. And and really, what it, what has hung around the longest in, when the line started was the Roadblock and then the weird roadblock from Cobra Island was the easiest of those to find, you know. So they're definitely being very cautious. So I, it, it's it's funny to try and start predicting now. It's like okay, so who else had like the most cartoon presence? Because that's probably who they're going to do next. Like mm -hmm. they've done most of the Cobra hierarchy at this point with with Blood and Baroness and Storm Shadow, Tomax and Zamot would be awesome. Yeah. I think they're they're definitely a good um, candidate. I don't know how they're going to do them though like i i could mm. see them being a con exclusive more than retail yeah. because i just don't know if parents are going to buy a two-pack that looks like the same guy but they'd have to be yeah they would have to definitely do i mean they'd probably make the scar more prominent also i like that they're reflected of each other you know that well, would that, be kind of neat that makes them really expensive because they can't use the same tool if yeah. they weren't mirror images if they just wore the same uniform that would make them a lot cheaper to produce but the mirror mm. is what makes them cool well, they they did. They just did over on the transformer side. They just did both of the the like decoy ones, like the the two red guys and mm. the two uh, the cobra. One's a hawk. One's a, a wolf. Oh, okay. They're like the pretenders. Yeah. I guess they were called. I don't remember. But okay. there's one that's like teal and white. That's the 
Decepticon one and then the two red guys were the Autobot ones. And they're like that. Obviously yeah. nowhere near as prominent right. characters, but you know, they're hitting those notes mm -hmm. with with that sort of thing. The other thing I want to mention is this line hasn't had like a reduction in quality since it came out. Like look at the paint apps on Flint's yeah. gun. Mm -hmm. Look at look at that shotgun. The brass tips on the shells and the handle is wood. Like that's awesome. That's probably why they're so hard to find though too is because the amount of detail they put into them. I mean a lot of that has to be hand done. It's not, you know. I think they're also doing they're also shifting more and more like vintage figure in design, and I think that's also going to increase popularity because mm -hmm. when these first came out, what was the biggest complaint? Oh, they got these sci-fi boots, they got these Nerf guns, and then look at look at Lady J and look at Flint. Like they're more and more like the old toy and more and more like the cartoon without being exactly that. Mm -hmm. Right. But they're getting away from the stuff that people didn't l like in the beginning, and I think that's going to help this line also grow. Uh, you know, with the with the fan community, I wish I, I wish I had them so we could show them, but I'm still out looking for them. Is they did the field variants of the Wave One, the Roadblock, the Duke, and the Scarlet? Yeah, where they took the criticism. I mean, I don't know if they actually took, but they look more like classic colors. They got the weird gold accents off, right? The more muted, more military. Of the, the first wave figures. Yeah, I think that Scarlet looks a lot more, again, like her vintage figure where she's got like the tan bodysuit to it, you know, with, the, mm -hmm. with the, a more yellow paint. Yeah. By the way, she's awesome in the video game. If you play the video game, play yeah. as Scarlet. She's like the best character. Okay. Next to Snake. Snake Eyes is a little like. Well, he's not. It's unfair to be Snake Eyes. Like. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but Scar but Scar Scarlet is like a close second in the game. Okay. Yeah. So who else? What do you think from Joe's side? We, we think the um, the twins would probably be the most likely to get a Cobra release. Maybe a, a Crimson Guard might also. Yeah. I mean, if they're doing, yeah. they did the the Viper. Right. I, I would love to see a Crimson Guard figure. I think, also, I think so. The Alley Viper and the Bat have been hinted at in photos from. Oh man, from a China bat would be so cool. It'd be amazing. So those guys, the Crimson Guard, yeah. I think you have to do. I'd love to see like the chest component too. If they make it like, because I always liked how it was glass with the like not glass but like clear with you could see into it kind of right. the lenticular. That would be so neat to see some sort of inner workings or something in the figure. The bat's on the back of the package, isn't it? Uh, it might be. Yeah, I, I think, think so. I think it is. I know that's one of the Super Seven ones too. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that's which is like crazy at a fifty-five dollar army builder. Yeah. Price point. But, <laughs> oh my god. But basically, Brian Flynn is like, I just like bats. They're my yeah, favorite thing. So cool. I'm doing it right away. You know. Um, I want General Hawk in the suit. I'm showing my bias towards in the, a suit. The, in the in the. Uh, Oh, the, oh the, the the flight suit, the, the jet flight suit. suit. Oh, yeah, that's that like cool. the, the ninety one or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, I like that. Would that. be cool. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm all about him in the bomber jacket, but I'm so biased to eighty six. Like mm -hmm. that, that whole lineup is like my favorite stuff. I love eighty five too. I, you know, there's really iconic guys in that year, and they're doing some of them with with Flint, and Lady J, and things like that. Um, but I would love like the 80, 86 General Hawk with the brown hair and the bomber jacket. Um, oh, that's cool. I'd be all about Lifeline. Lifeline yeah. would be cool, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of good characters from that year. Yeah. I um, think I would want to see, I know it's like a weird figure, but I would want to see the snake eyes, the, the bright red goggles okay. with the mask, like bright blue snake eyes. <laughs> I think that would be so cool to see with the weird jet, or uh, what is it, the grappling hook. The grappling hook launcher, launcher on the back. back. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that was one of my first snake eyes figure I've had. Actually, too, did, did they do beachhead? They did. He's okay. one of the um, one of the Target exclusives that was super hard to get. Okay, yeah. Because I haven't seen him. Uh, honestly, anybody from the movie like Nemesis Enforcer would be cool. I know that's a they're, another they're Cobra. Like a hot button I'm more items of a Cobra a, a guy. Lot of people anyway. hate those guys. The Cobra I Law guys. I love the Cobra Law. Like so, I, I or like Pythona would be cool. We've never gotten a yeah. good Pythona figure. I, I feel here's like. one of those weird things for me. Like everyone hates the Snake Eyes movie because it's not like the comic book. I feel like G.I. Joe is a brand that has never had a consistent continuity, kind of like Masters of the Universe. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Masters of the Universe had the mini comics and the Filmation show, and they didn't match up. G.I. Joe had the cartoon and the comic, and they never matched up. Like, Snake Eyes is, is with Scarlet. Oh, no, Duke is with Scarlet. Which one is it? Mm -hmm. You know? And so, as a kid, I just kind of got used to, like, well, there's this version of G.I. Joe, and there's that version of G.I. Joe. So, I don't get super concerned with whether it's following the comic or not. I think the comic story is really well done. 
Um, so I don't I don't mind when they do like weird versions. So to me, like the fact that Nemesis and Force and those guys weren't super military didn't really bother me. They were just it was a great story. Yeah, I, I, I maybe it's a little weird that they were like. That uh, to me, the the bridge too far was that Cobra Commander was one of them. That yeah, part of yeah, the story, that was, if that's the only part of that story that I would change, and 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 I think it would be better. Mm-hmm. Like he he doesn't need to be actually one of them weird alien people. But otherwise, I love that they exist, and you know, like there that's was a, a lot cool of retconning thing. in the movie. So much it was our idea to make Serpentor. We put yeah. it in your brain and all that <laughs> stuff, you know. <laughs> and like even that part doesn't bother me because that it just works. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, the fact that Cobra Commander because we've clearly. Not clearly, but we've it's been hinted. Like you in the cartoon, you saw like his chin. Uh, he puts on his man. He changes mm-hmm. helmets in the cartoon the one time, and in the comics, he's clearly just a regular guy. Yeah. Uh, so th- well, he's that, a he was a car salesman. Car salesman. He just <laughs> had a bad day one day, and and he's decided such a joker. To, yeah, yeah. Um, so that becomes like a weird thing, but I don't mind that they changed up. But yeah, the the Cobra Law guys are really. Uh, a line, a hard line for a lot of Joe fans. They just don't like the, them. Even the guys that designed them didn't want to have to do that. Oh, really? It was like, wow. it came down from marketing. I loved the movie. It, yeah. It's one of the first uh, G.I. Joe cartoon things I watched as okay. a kid. Because um, by, by the time I was into G.I. Joe, uh, I, you know, it was uh, like 90. I, I got into it later through my cousins. Yeah. I was into Ninja Turtles first, and then I liked G.I. Joe because they were people. And the movie was the first show I watched where my cousin got it for me on VHS for Christmas one year. And uh, I had all, I also have the 91 Impel uh, the entire line of cards. Yeah. yeah. One of the weird things with the movie for me is because that was the only thing I could really rewatch. Like, I, I grew up watching the cartoon. I didn't see the first couple of miniseries, but I watched the, you know, the 85 and 86 mm-hmm. season of the, the show. And the movie came out in 87. But I had that, like, taped off TV. So for years after that, like, as I continued to play with G.I. Joe through the early 90s, I would rewatch that movie, and I would remember the plots of the other cartoons, but in my head, they looked just as good. Yeah. And, like, when you go back and watch it, you're like, yeah, the animation was the not animation as good on, on the, the show. show. No. But the movie is fantastic. You no, know, I, I actually watch the show a lot because I, I have the uh, the Foot Locker okay. of oh, wow. the whole yeah. series. I got it, you know, yeah. years ago as a Christmas present, and... uh I, that's the one thing like I will never part with that Foot Locker. I've had it for now. I, I don't even know how many years, but I will pop those in and just watch them. Before the DVD sets came out, like because there was that set. There's there's a couple different sets. Like Kid Rhino started doing it, mm-hmm. and and then uh, but before that, there were VHS tapes put out by Kid Rhino. Yeah, and they were like thirty five bucks a piece, which was like a ridiculous amount of money when I was in high school. But I bought all of them, like wow. like one at a time to get them all. And I'm like, why do I have these? But also, they're GI Joe, and I like collect GI Joe. So whenever I look at those, I'm like, God, that was expensive. And then I just rebought them all on DVD. Anyway. I used to <laughs> find the uh, the Kid Rhino tapes at yeah. my supermarket for like they were in like the 99 cent when like DVDs were out. They right, just had right. so many of them. And I also have some of the ones in the big box. I think FHE did those. Yeah, I and, have a couple uh, I have of, a those. Few of those. I have like the one where it's like uh, the High Freak. Right. Machine where it commands the animals and everything. So, like, those ones are actually back when the show was on air, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. You could rent, rent G.I. Joe from the video yeah. store. I used to ask to rent it all the time. My mom's like, you could just watch it on TV. I, I remember going to the video store. I went to this, like, Maple Glen video, which is a hole-in-the-wall video store. And whenever the G.I. Joe stuff was sitting there, the G.I. Joe stuff and the Transformer stuff, always the vhs was out and the beta was there mm. and we didn't have a beta player right so i couldn't i couldn't watch it and i always like wondered what was in there <laughs> because like it, it it would it would always be out um but that you know that it, i just i could still vividly remember it was like it was like on the third shelf up and there they were i remember with a friend trying to rent the masters of the universe movie in the late 80s like probably shortly after it came out on vhs um, but it, it was like the movie store had it on beta mm-hmm. yeah. and so we couldn't rent it. And I, I never saw it as a kid then. Cause I was just like, Oh, you can't play that movie. Like it was just in my head that that movie you couldn't watch. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, I never asked to like you somewhere else. I just was it. like, yeah, you can't watch that movie. You have to have a different kind of player for it. <laughs> yeah. One of these days I'll One of these finally days. get a, I'll watch the movie. I'll I watched watch it, it on, I watched it on like, DVD. Uh, it was that much yeah. later than <laughs> it's probably on YouTube now. You probably yeah, just probably. <laughs> So uh, the line is pretty extensive. We don't see any signs of it slowing down because the fact that it's selling out makes me think they're just going to keep pumping out waves. Whether they 
The only thing that worries me about them trying to make the stock more available is if they start making it a slowly more available and then people stop scalping it a little bit because they're not making as much money, will it then all of a sudden switch from instant sellout to just selling a little too slow and, and kill itself? Because I think some people are going to be more cautious now. The Major Blood like came out like a flash in the pan, went real high on eBay, and then they like became easy to get for a split second. Mm-hmm. Um, and they re-released some of the other Target stuff. The Cobra Infantry guy and Beachhead and a few others were available just not too long ago on Pulse for just like a day, but that then made it like not super easy to get, but much easier to get. Yeah. And so will they will they start like increasing availability but hurt the secondary market and then they don't fly off the shelves as fast and create like this whole issue? I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I think I'm probably naive about this. This is like me being naive. It's probably a lot of collectors, a lot of scalpers, a lot yeah. of this. But, you know, in my heart, I'm like, man, maybe people just are ready for G.I. Joe to come back. I don't. I just don't know what kid is. I mean, the Snake Eyes movie will make it aware for kids again. Yeah. But, like, is the fact that the old cartoon is on YouTube is that, is that good enough to get kids to find our our kids finding that? And would a kid that watches that look at these in the store and go, "Oh, that's the guy from that show." Some of them look like the cartoon, and some of them don't. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I bought to get some of these. I ended up buying a case. Okay. So I had a double of Roadblock and a double of Scarlet, and I gave them to my son, and my son played with them. Like they were Fortnite characters. Yeah. Didn't even, doesn't know their names. Right. Doesn't know G.I. Joe. They're going on a bus. They're going on a wild thing. Did not even think about it or ask about it. There was a two to three week period where he was down. And now they're just sitting in my bedroom on my dresser. And he has abandoned them to to the dresser. You can have yeah. this back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's it's the only toy I've ever like gotten back that, that I that I gave him. He's like, here you go, and he sits there and plays Mario Golf, and I think he sits the the Switch controller on them when he's charging it. I'm like, wow, you know that didn't go as bad as Ninja Turtles. Mm. I handed him the the new the newest line of the four turtles. I'm like, here's the four turtles. And he's like, I don't really like this. Do I have to take them? I'm like, wow. yeah, shoot, no. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just, <laughs> I feel like G.I. Joe is not, I don't think kids are going to really care. I yeah. think it's just us. I think it's all of us who grew up with it. I think it was just something that you had to be around at that time, 80s to 90s. I think the media is a huge part of it. If you, because any toy line, if you, if you go back f- even from our era, like the toy lines that no one remembers at all mm-hmm. are the things that didn't have a cartoon or barely had a cartoon, right? In humanoids, yeah, we remember it, but it's not big, mm-hmm. right? It didn't get a second wave really, and it's because the sh- the show just didn't really catch on, whether it was the wrong time slot or or whatever. And a lot of other toys, there's a lot of really great brands from that era, but that probably is the same thing going forward, right? You know, Mighty Max had a cartoon, so people still remember Mighty Max pop- positively from the nineties. Power Rangers had a show. Right, so those toys are still popular. Yeah, but like GI Joe doesn't have media aimed at kids anymore. The really the last time it was was you know the early two thousands, and it was like a one shot like movie that they put on Nickelodeon and pack yeah. in DVDs and sets. There was the what Renegades for a while was right, was Ren- actually really decent. It was and good, and, yeah. yeah. And I mean, Resolute was awesome, but not I, aimed I, at kids. Yeah, exa- right. exactly. It was for the people right. who were Resolute adults. is probably one of the best GI Joe. Oh, yeah, I mean, maybe is the best GI Joe thing for all it's the first time that was like you know? cobra commander was like substantial he yes. blew up moscow he yeah. destroyed the entire city and then it was this race to have to find him before he blows the world up it was the first time it wasn't uh i'm gonna make a bunch of you know fast food restaurants with rockets on them or <laughs> <laughs> it was, the, it was the first time where, where things were actually like aimed at adults yeah. you know and that's what made it kind of neat that's one of the things like like the, the master universe revelation show it's whether you like it or hate it, it's the first time He-Man's being, like, truly marketed at an adult. Mm-hmm. Like, 
he can use the sword to hit somebody, you know? Yeah. Or, like, the G.I. Joes can actually get hurt and, like, you know? The, the only episode, I think, in the old cartoon that was like that was where they, they accidentally warped to that other dimension where Cobra won. Right. And, yeah. like, they find their skeletons in a in a <laughs> blown out pit and and Steeler freaks out and then and then he gets with the Baroness at the end like and she's in a bathrobe the whole time it's probably why I'm into the Baroness as an adult now I guess or whatever it's like the uh, days of future past of <laughs> yeah, G.I. Joe of G.I. Yeah. Joe basically and yeah. Worlds Without End yeah it's, yeah. A, it's a good that's good an two-parter. amazing yep. two-parter yeah it's one of my favorites so the G.I. Joe multiverse started right there with that one yeah pretty know. much <laughs> Yeah, I, I was just, I'm just incredibly excited about this. There's very few toys. Outside of Lego, I'm like kind of off the, the toy train. There's a few things like the the new Transformers the movie guys. I'm probably going to pick those up. But other than that, I mean, this is where I'm at when it comes to toys. And it's it's been a really good ride. And it got me into the game. Mm-hmm. It got me into the Snake Eyes movie for better or for worse. Uh, <laughs> I still haven't seen it yet, but I don't know when I'm gonna. Yeah, I might wait till um, it comes out. Probably just wait till it comes out. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna get every variant. Okay. I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, man, there's a snake guys where he's got red on his head. Like that's where I'm at with this line right now, and it's, it's unhealthy, but it's, uh, I, I like it. So in its current state of the, of the line as of, as of this recording, um, I don't have the Supreme Cover Commander. I kind of wish I had gotten him, but it was the third helmeted Cobra Commander, and he's red. And I, yeah. to me, Cobra Commander needs to be blue, or like there needs to be a reason why he's totally different. I, like, yeah, you know, like I, the silver battle armor. Sure, okay, that's fine. But to me, red's a, l- a little bit odd. And I know they've done a couple of red figures of him over the years, but not in the like the original classic line. I only collect Cobra Commander. Really, uh, uh, the only other one I would buy is the Viper because Viper's yeah. my favorite Cobra troop there is. But I. I got the uh, Snake Supreme the second I saw that it was open for um, pre-orders. I had to get it. At that time, I didn't have the Deluxe Snake Eyes. And I was just like, I'm just going to skip the Deluxe guys. Then I went back and got the Deluxe Snake Eyes. So now I'm kicking myself Mm -hmm. on that one. And I don't have the Target Cobra Trooper. I have the the regular Cobra Trooper, which is very similar. Yeah. Um, I would still get it if I saw it. I actually have seen a few at toy shows that I've like almost pulled the trigger on. Um, The thing was, too, when I I pre-ordered this, you didn't pay until... It shipped, so I just would. I was like, okay, well, it's like it, w- it was forty bucks yeah. because it was, you know, it was twenty dollars plus a fee in taxes, and then the shipping was ten or something. So it came to forty. But I was like, I don't mind the figure. It's you know, I have the regular Cobra Commander, but this the packaging is super nice. The figure itself is really cool. The detail on it and everything. There's a lot of like work they put into it, and I just really Cobra Commander is my favorite character. It has always been since I was a kid. And I had to get it. I just had to pick it up. I have to ask you, do you think you're going to make it to PulseCon for the... Am I going to uh, make it to PulseCon? Yeah. Is uh, that... I, it, are they having a pulse, like an actual well, PulseCon? So, they're, doing, they're doing like pre-sales so and stuff, right? So they're showing... There's a Zartan. Z- Zartan is a PulseCon 2021 exclusive, and I'm like, well, I got to get that. Oh, so is the there, weird thing is, is, I'm not 100% sure, but I have a feeling he's packed out with the different masks. Like... Because, you know, this is like, let's get the really crazy collectors to just buy six versions of this figure. Like, mm-hmm. I think you can get him with the Sartan head, or you can get him with the Storm Shadow head, or you can get him with the Duke head. I could be wrong. The outside of the box has, like, a spinny thing that lets you, like, display him with the different masks. But I think inside the package, they have him packed out with different masks. Hmm. So either it's going to be a lottery, you don't know which one you're getting, or you can order it that way. I, I didn't look into it that Wait, carefully. You, you get them all, though. It's just yes, they're all in he's... there. Because... Because you have the people that will leave it in the package, and so if people want to display it with a mask or without the mask, but yeah, like so that that's what's hard for me as a collector. I, for the most part, take things out of the package. Yeah. So when a figure is deluxe because he has this amazing package, I go, that's really cool, but I don't really want to pay money to have like an '80s collector case. Like NECA will do that, and it looks fantastic, but I, I want to take the figures out, and then I don't know what to do with that thing, mm-hmm. right? So. The Zartan, the Snake Eyes, the Cobra, the Supreme Cobra Commander. I'm like, I'm buying this fancy box that I don't want to keep it in. Well, the thing is, what's kind of cool about this, though, is it's already opened. Yeah. There's no, like, there's no, you could take them right out. Okay. It, he, it's just the box itself is is just pretty much like, uh, like I don't know, it's uh, 
like it it's just it opens up and he's exposed completely right there's no uh extra packaging but i i like that it's like it doubles as it's a display you know yeah. yeah it's super cool plus the box is awesome the cobra symbol and stuff but i don't care about zartan so i don't i really don't <laughs> i'm not gonna buy him <laughs> i'm gonna buy i'm gonna save my money for that super seven cobra commander there you go <laughs> Yeah, I I don't think I would need six Zartans if they were all the same. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I could be wrong, but based on the pictures I was looking at, I'm pretty sure they're packing them out in different ways. Yeah, which is like a a neat idea, but also a crazy idea. So he comes with all the items, but it's depending on what which, is on there. To, yeah. Okay. Mm, That's nice. kind of neat though, like, but Mattel had done it with a uh, hero from Motu Classics. Okay. There were different colored gems in his staff. And, like, when you bought him, because he was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, you got him with, like, different colored hmm. gems. And the idea was that, well, some collectors will want every colored gem. And I'm like, yeah, but I also would like to, like, buy other figures yeah. and not have, oh, the purple one and the green one, you know? Do you remember the Marvel Universe series that was, like, scaled to, like, they were almost Joe size? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, 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 I really like that line. I yeah. used to collect those with my 25th anniversary ones, and I would play with them in my dorm and make it like Iron Man was working with you know, uh, the Joes and stuff. The, the only, um, the only San Diego Comic-Con exclusive figure I own is the Hulk there. That's like all the Hulks. He's oh, the yeah. gray Hulk, the red Hulk, the green Hulk. Yeah, yeah. He's all in one. Um, I got that one. Uh, but, but outside of that, like, like the convention exclusives, like the, it's so hard for me to like be monitoring it at a level that I know when to pull the trigger. So I'm getting it on eBay or like, I got that one in Wildwood and I right. got it for very close to retail. The other thing that's getting harder is that the exclusives are becoming less exclusive, which is good in the sense that you don't miss out, but also you spend the extra money again, like to get the Comic-Con release with the special package. And then they release basically the same figure later. Yeah. The Snake Eyes was like that, too. Right. So that's a great example where, like, yeah, that Snake Eyes is very similar to the regular release. So you buy the fancy box. He has extra weapons, but those extra weapons came with somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, Masters of the Universe, they just did a Comic-Con Scareglow, but he's going to be in Wave 3. So he'll be different, but, like, if you keep him in the package, then it's cool to have him in the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. And like I was saying, if you like to take the stuff out, now you have just kind of a slightly different scare glow and you spend a bunch of money for a box that's in their closet. Like. Yeah. I have a question for you because I haven't seen this with any other toy line. I got the Sneak Supreme Cobra Commander like a year before it was generally available. Right. Right now, I can go on eBay and get Snake Eyes with Timber shipped from Hong Kong from somebody and it'll come to my door in a week. Yeah. That figure is not out yet. Are we seeing that with other lines, or is this a G.I. Joe thing? No, I think it is happening more and more. I, I, For one thing, the distribution is getting weirder. Like, stuff is going to Canada before we get it for certain toy lines. Stuff is showing up just kind of randomly, but also it's becoming much more valuable to the the Chinese employees, basically, to just, like, rip off stuff from the factory. I think, I think it started with some of the prototypes. They started realizing, you know, oh, if we smuggle out these test shots, we can sell them on eBay and make a bunch of money, and now it's just, like... They're just ripping off the regular figures. Mm. And I'm sure Hasbro is trying to shut that down, but also, like, what's Hasbro going to do? It's not their employee that's stealing. It's the employee of a company they subcontract to to make the figures. Exactly. And they can harp on the company, the, the factory, as much as they want about security, but, like, it's getting harder and harder to find these factories to make the toys. The, the Chinese economy is turning more... Uh, white collar so people have other job options so they don't want to work in factories as much they're moving a lot more toy production to vietnam now um but all of that is creating more mm -hmm. opportunity for things to get taken you know th these photographs of prototypes to get sent yeah. out on the internet like it's it's getting very hard to keep anything a secret and let or just to have it distributed well, that was, property that was a thing i ordered this thing pre-ordered it back in uh like september yeah uh a week later, Ryan shows me his, and I'm like, "Wow, cool, man!" Like, <laughs> it's just like, I guess I'll wait until March or whatever. I think I got this in like it, it didn't get here until April or something. Yeah. Like, so, so Ryan's like got put in a a box and FedExed overnight, basically yeah, on a and, plane. And, and, and yours, <laughs> yours sat in the factory. Ryan until comes all into my made. office, like, and I was just like, 
I didn't. I was just like, <laughs> and well, at least I didn't pay for mine yet. Yours floated on a cargo ship? I did pay like one third, though, I think, or something uh, or whatever it was, because I didn't pay for the, you right. know, I waited. Right. I was patient. But it was cool seeing it and then going, okay, so I'm happy that I paid the money for this. I'm, I'm very glad, but. <laughs> so, so, so I have a question. Let's say I drive up to Buffalo and I cross over to Canada and right on the QEW when you come into Canada, on the right is Toys R Us. Uh-huh. How much G.I. Joe Classified is sitting in that? Like, is it, is it a fairly good? That I don't know. For one thing, Canada is closed, though. I don't think they're going to let you in. I'm cool, man. Is that I, don't you know, I don't know if you know. You is that the new uh, prescription medication that everybody used to yeah, cross over to for GI Joe's? Joe's now? Now. <laughs> I know some of the like the Masters of the Universe stuff has been showing up there a lot more. I don't I don't know for sure whether the GI Joe stuff is showing up there early, whether it's one particular brand or one manufacturer. Um, I just know that that has happened um, with some of that stuff. Even even a lot of the Mattel stuff comes out in Europe first. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure on the G.I. Joe brand itself exactly where it's at or whether it's selling out just as fast in those other places. But yeah. people do randomly find stuff. Like, you know, when you, when you start seeing online, oh, this has shown up, like someone in California will have a, pic, a picture of it, and I'll go to the store, and it's not there. Mm-hmm. And then, like, two weeks later, after I've already given up because I've checked four times, then a friend is like, oh, hey, I found this thing. I'm like, Okay, I guess I should have kept checking. Honestly, I've only seen I've seen the the major blood figures. I've saw I've seen Roadblock, and I saw the the one Cobra Commander that I bought myself, the regular dark blue one. I saw it in Target. I snatched it because I knew I wasn't going to see it ever again if I didn't get it. And that's the only time I've ever seen these figures. The distribution is so odd, though. Like I would check my local uh, Walmart for the retro line like they mm-hmm. had the the his tank and and i've those never guys. seen those so like i wouldn't find them locally and then my friends and i went on a road trip we went to um another state and we found a bunch of that stuff mm-hmm. like in a different walmart that either just isn't as collector heavy area or there's less scalpers or who knows what that's it always is. whenever i go on like a trip somewhere you know to somewhere weird i always if i see a target or a walmart i stop in and i go to the toy section yeah i was so mad i was at walmart i text you I'm oh like, yeah. They have all these classics ones. They got Snake Eyes, they got Lady J, they got it all. And I had them all laid out. I took the pictures in the aisle, sent them to you. We were walking around. You're like, "Yeah, I want that. Right. I need that." I go back and Snake Eyes is gone. gone. I'm like, "Oh. You know what I have been seeing? They they make uh micro machines of, yeah. of G.I. Joe vehicles yes. now too. They're made by uh, Jada Toys. So one of the things that they're coming out with that I'm excited for, I've, I've been trying to get like more details on it. They're doing an RC car that's the like the Vamp Mark II, the tan oh, Vamp. Oh, oh no way. Jada's doing that. It looks really cool. That's, that's cool. awesome. I have Might to say the, the the real Ghostbuster stuff seems to be well stocked, <laughs> but even that was like missing in action for a long time. Remember that came out during COVID, like the heart of COVID. It hit and then was just gone mm-hmm. because I had gotten um, like Stay Puff and I refused to buy the Ghostbusters unless I could get them all together because I was like, this is one of those lines. I'm going to buy three of them and never find the fourth one. and It's going to just drive me nuts. So I just skipped them. And then, like I said, on that road trip, we were far away and all four of them were there. Mm-hmm. And now they've restocked them. But again, they seem to be gone. Like mm. it, it's weird how – how distribution works right now. I, I walked into Newt from uh, Hack the Movies, right. his office, and I saw Peter was missing. Oh, okay. And I'm like, Peter is missing. This cannot stand. This cannot stand. <laughs> <laughs> I went and I got him Peter because I was like, we, I can't come in here. Oh, yeah, if yeah. they're not all, all the Ghostbusters are With there. me, I would only want Peter and Egon. Yeah. That's it. Okay. I'm cool only collecting my specific ones that I want. I, ne- I I'm not a completionist when it comes gotcha. to that. So I would just get the two. I'm I'm like weird. By the way, guys, I just want to say it publicly. If you see an Ecto one, say something. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would like that. I think the only ones that I've heard of people getting are people that had review samples of it. Yeah. You know, I am weird though. Actually, when it comes to the bat movie, like the. Uh, those Hot Wheels Batmos, Batmobiles, I have one of every single model that Hot Wheels has made since 2004. Wow. Which is when they started. Okay. but And then I was like, oh, cool, I have them all. And then I was like, 
but they come in different packaging now. So now I need to get the packages variants and yeah. stuff. So I've been buying any ones that I see in different packaging. It's a slippery slope, man. It's weird. I'm I'm weird about certain things, but certain things I'm not. It's I don't know what to even collecting. Do. Don't do it. Yeah, just, just don't. don't do it. Man, I I really wish that I collected 99 cent little cars. Right, that's stuff. the thing. Well, when the, when you're trying to find a 2004 Batmobile from you know first edition, then it comes up to be like five dollars for that oh, 99 boy. Cent, oh and boy. then five dollar shipping. But yeah, you know I. I'll, you know, that's the thing. It is a cheap thing to collect now yeah. that I, I hope it's you, a little easier to if collect. If I start talking about this and the Batmobile price of, all right, you're going to get <laughs> driven up, I'm going to be really pissed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on to talk about G.I. Joe Classified. It's a line that we all enjoy. I, I, I guess we're about done here. I, I think so. Yeah. No, that was awesome. I loved being on the show. This is a lot of fun. Peg warmers. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to come back sometime. It was just right. great. Yeah. Let me know. We'll definitely have to set something up. You, you were talking about Newt. I had him on. We did talk about his Ghostbusters collection. Oh, that's great. So, you know, yeah. Anytime somebody's got something they want to they want to talk about, feel free to, to yeah. reach out. I, I guess also, you know, Cinemassacre podcast, we're doing that. On Cinemasker and also uh, my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Kiern. It's K I five E's and then R N. Uh, Kiern. Kiern. Yeah. I do uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays. Nice. At 8 30 p.m. About. Awesome. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time. Play a bunch of stuff, new, old, anything. S- 7 30 Central. Yeah. 7 30 Central. <laughs> uh, what is it? 9 30 Mountain Time? I don't know. It would be 8. 8.30 Mountain Time? No, eight, yeah, 6.30. 6 okay, yeah, it's backward. That's right. Coming and if you're the out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it's like an hour earlier or whatever. <laughs> if you're flying somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for hanging on the pegs with us. We'll see you next time. Bye.